the square root method. So I'm just going to go down and we're going to encounter each box here and go from there. All right, now let me start with a real basic example here, one that I think a lot of students will like here. Let's take x squared equals 9. And, and if I said use the square root method to solve for x, what a lot of students will do is they'll take the square root of both sides because the square root undoes the square, and they'll say, young, the answer is x equals 3. But what they forget, quadratic equations, usually have two answers. In this case, whenever you take the square root of a variable squared, you don't get just the positive 3, but you could also get negative 3. Because think about this. If you take some number squared equals 9, and you plug 3 back in, it checks. But notice, so does negative 3. If you square it, it gives you 9. So this plus or minus in this section is huge. Because if you only put one answer, you could miss half of each problem. So be very careful here. All right, let's try a few more. Let's take y squared equals 49. The square root method says whenever you are trying to take out the square, attack it with the square root, y will equal plus or minus 7. Or let's try another one here. b squared equals 90. Take the square root of both sides. Now notice 90 is not a nice perfect square or square root like the first few examples. So in this case, we would have to simplify the square root of 90, hopefully knowing that's the square root of 9 times the square root of 10 using the product rule. So b would equal plus or minus 3 times the square root of 10. So just like back in Chapter 7, you need to make sure all of your square roots are simplified, looking for those nice, perfect square numbers. All right, but the square root method can also be applied to complex numbers. You could also have, let's say, b squared equals negative 25. So if you take the square root of both sides and you can deal with complex numbers, b will equal plus or minus 5i. Now remember, the square root of negative 25 is the square root of 25 times the square root of negative 1, which hopefully in the last part of chapter 7, you realize the square root of negative 1 is the imaginary number i. So you can have real answers like we had in the earlier ones, or you can have complex answers, depending on the type of equation, quadratic equation they want to throw at you. So it's pretty good stuff here. All right, now not only can you simplify square roots, um, but you can also simplify square root quantities. Let's take, for example, 2x minus 1 quantity squared equals... Four. solve the quadratic equation for x. Now, again, whenever you see something squared, attack with the square root. Okay, so 2x minus 1 equals, what's the square root of 4? 2, but be careful again. Whenever you take the square root of something squared, not one answer, but, oh, that plus or minus. I could see it hurting grades if you're not careful in Chapter 8 and even in future courses. So to get your two answers now, we have to take this and say, well, 2x minus 1 could equal positive 2 or 2x minus 1 equals negative 2. So solving, we'll get 2x equals 3, divide both sides by 2, and x will equal 3 halves. Adding 1 to the other side, 2x equals negative 1, dividing by 2. The other answer is x equals negative 1 half. So there are your two answers. Now, if you wanted to check these, let's go back to the original problem. I'll go ahead and write it up here again. 
This is what we started with. If I take one of these, and I'm going to take probably the one you guys wouldn't want me to, but both of them are fractions, so you may not want me to take either one and check it. We're going to take this negative one half and substitute it right in here for x. And we're going to see if this thing makes sense. Because you always want to check equations to make sure they make sense. All right. So if I take negative one half up here, two times negative one half would be negative one minus this one that's next to it up here in the parentheses squared would give us a negative two squared, which indeed checks and gives us the answer of four. Also, the other fraction, three halves, will check too, if you want to take a minute and plug that in yourself. So all equations, be sure to check them. All right, now let's go ahead here. And I remember I said earlier, I'm going to go back to my handout here real quick. Let me clear this slide. So we have now discussed the square root method here. So let me just put a little asterisk next to this. And notice the directions here say if x squared equals some number, then x equals plus or minus the square root of that number. And I gave you some more examples there. Now notice that's when the number is greater than zero. Now notice down here, and I'll go green, when the number is less than zero, and you take the square root of something negative, complex answers. And I did a few of those for examples. Notice the second one here with the minus 13, and I'll kind of look at this one here. If you take the square root of a negative 13, as I had to on this one here, so I can take this and kind of square root both sides, I got 3x minus 2 equals the square root of um, negative 13. Now, remember, that breaks apart into the square root of 13 times the square root of negative 1. And this all becomes, on the right side of the equation, 3x minus 2 equals plus or minus i times the square root of 13. And then just solve for x like you normally would, and you get some really fun, complex answers there.